Ahead this half hour, repeated sexual harassment and a culture filled with fear and intimidation. Those findings by the state attorney general looking into the governor, prompting bipartisan calls for Andrew Cuomo to go. So what's next? Plus the actual definition of sexual harassment in this state. The governor helped change the law, so is his characterization correct? And later, mandatory vaccines will be required in New York City for indoor restaurants and gyms. We ask, could that same requirement happen here in our region? We will get to all of that, but we're going to start today's town hall with some breaking news. The leader of the New York Assembly, a Democrat, says that Governor Cuomo has, quote, lost the confidence of the assembly democratic majority and that he can no longer remain in office. And he says once the Judiciary Committee has the relevant documents and evidence from the attorney general, it will be wrapping up the impeachment investigation quote as quickly as possible. The calls for Andrew Cuomo to leave office are bipartisan. You have many Republicans, but also a lot of people from the governor's own party. That now includes the President of the United States, both of our U.S. Senators, Buffalo's Democratic Congressman Brian Higgins, and State Senators Sean Ryan and Tim Kennedy, among many others. Ryan said if Cuomo refuses to resign, quote, it is incumbent upon the Assembly and Senate to remove him from office. And so with that in mind, we welcome to the show right now Jim Gardner. He joins us live. He is the Bridget and Thomas Black SUNY Distinguished Professor at UB's Law School. Great to have you on. Thanks for your time. Thanks, nice to be with you. And Jim, we went through two impeachments at the federal level over the past several years, but there are differences with New York State. So what should viewers know about this process and how it will play out in the coming weeks and months? Well, I think the main thing that people need to know is that we don't really know very much about what it's uh, like to impeach a governor because it's not something that's been done in this state for over a century. Impeachment is not really a live political tool in this state, and so we don't really know exactly what form it will take when it will be, if, it's, if it is revived. Jim, there are same, so, some things that are a little bit different, though, um, than what we saw happen, for instance, with President Trump twice, with former President Clinton, um, that if, if the governor is impeached and not yet removed from office, he could still face sort of immediate consequences, right? Yeah, well, uh, one way in which the New York impeachment provisions differ from the federal ones is that if the governor is impeached, he then ceases to serve as governor pending the outcome of his impeachment trial. So that's very different than the federal level where the president can be impeached and then continue to act as president. What would happen is the lieutenant governor would then serve as governor until the impeachment trial was finished. And we've covered a lot of criminal activity among elected officials in New York State. And right now the governor does not face an indictment but there are serious allegations of unethical behavior. So your thought on the fine line between the two, something unethical and something illegal in his position. Well, for purposes of, let me put this in the context of impeachment. So, so um, on the, the federal level, the, the, the definition of impeachment is in the constitution, but it, it high crimes and misdemeanors, as we all know, but it is somewhat vague. And that definition has been narrowed over time through practice, really to coincide with the commission of a criminal offense. And, and that's why I think why Donald Trump was not um, convicted, or at least one of the reasons. In New York, we have no constitutional definition of of what an, is an impeachable offense to begin with. So unethical conduct that falls short of criminality certainly seems to be contemplated. But if New York were to follow the federal trend and consider the definition of impeachable offenses to be only uh, coincidental with the commission of a crime, then the fact that he may not have committed an indictable offense would be a defense against impeachment as well. Certainly just the beginning. Jim Gardner is a professor at UB's Law School. Great to have your expertise and your insight tonight. Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks as always, Professor. So last half hour, we shared the statement that we got from Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul, who the professor just mentioned. She condemned sexual harassment and importantly said that she believes the women who have come forward. She wouldn't say if Cuomo should resign or be impeached, arguing it would be inappropriate for her to comment, considering she is next in the line of succession. 
Hochul would become the state's first female governor. And of course, she's right here from right here in western New York. So let's talk more now with Democrat Ken Cruley and Republican Carl Calabrese. They are two on your side legal analysts. And we thank you both for joining us tonight as well. All right, Ken, let's first go to you here. Politically, how did Kathy Hochul handle this today? I mean, kind of being put in an impossible situation, but how do you think she handled it? And do you think she's gonna be the next governor of the state? Well, I think she handled it very well, given the circumstances. Uh, uh, she did everything short of calling for the resignation and because of her the circumstances with her uh, moving up, if, if that if may happen, uh, I, I can understand that. Uh, I, I think that uh, what happens next is uh, uh, highly likely that the uh, Assembly Judiciary Committee goes into high year, gear and uh, use a balance report to uh, get, uh, get going. Uh, the governor says he's not resigning, so the only alternative left is impeachment. Yeah, and Carl, Republicans have demanding the governor to step down for a while now, but now we're hearing the same calls, of course, from Democrats with a resignation unlikely. Based on your knowledge of the legislature, are the votes there to impeach him and remove him from office? Well, we don't know, but that is the key question. You know, let's just put this in a historical context. Richard Nixon did not resign after impeachment. He was impeached by the House. He did not resign until the, the uh, Republican leadership, led by then the minority leader, Hugh Scott and Barry Goldwater, came to him and said, Mr. President, it's over. There are enough votes in our House to convict and remove you. So I would think that that could be a similar situation here, where if the uh, assembly leader, Carl Hasty, the speaker, and the Senate majority leader, uh, Andrea Stewart Cousins, were to go to the governor in the next few days and say, Governor, it's over. There are not only enough votes to impeach you in the assembly, but there are also indeed enough votes in the Senate to remove you, uh, to convict and remove you. Then I think he resigns. So I would bet you right now that he is making calls to senators. And I would bet you that both the speaker and the majority leader are making calls to get the temperature of the members in their respective house. I think that's going to decide whether he tries to ride this thing out, uh, because the only thing worse than resigning is to be convicted. And uh, he's going to be looking very closely at how that Senate lines up. Yeah, and Ken, I don't think we've heard from a single elected official today who has defended the governor at all or said that he should remain in office. So realistically, is this it for him politically? And maybe more importantly, what is the impact on New Yorkers of him hanging on? The, uh, there really aren't any defenders. And so uh, the governor is uh, left to his own devices, as Carol says. Uh, the uh, it, Seems likely since both the speaker and the, the majority leader of the Senate have called for the resignation that hopefully they will uh, appeal to the governor to, to get the process over with. Carl, let me ask you about the impact that this has on state government right now, because after all, the pandemic is not over. We certainly hope that it doesn't get as bad here as it is in some other states right now, but there are parts of the country that are right in the thick of this. Um, and of course, this, you know, these allegations against the governor have overshadowed Albany for quite a while. We went through the budget process with all of this playing out, but this really does take it to a whole new level. What is Albany going to be like for the coming weeks and months? Well, you know, uh, politics is like nature. It, it abhors a vacuum, and the vacuum, uh, when a vacuum in politics exists, when power uh, is suddenly uh, opened up, there will always be a person or people to rush in to try to claim it. It never goes unused. Right now, you've got a weakened governor. You've got a vacuum of power, and uh, you're going to see a lot of other elected officials jockeying to get as much of that power as quickly as possible to try to drive whatever issues come up between now and when this thing is resolved. And uh, that's just the nature of politics. And that's it's that's happening now. Uh, it happened during the budget process. It's going to continue to happen so long as he is uh, the governor and in a very weakened state. So, Carl, how quickly do you think we could see things really start to move now? I think, they, I, again, I think they could be very quick. I, I think if uh, he were to get that call from the Speaker of the Assembly and the Majority Leader of the Senate, that it's over, that the votes are there to convict him and remove him, I think it could be a matter of days. If that doesn't happen, he's going to try to stick this thing out. Remember, uh, last spring, uh, he survived just an avalanche of Democrats across the state calling for him to step down when these allegations first surfaced. Be prior All right, Carl, we're losing your signal. Legislature, 
and uh, that had called for his removal or his stepping down. Now you've got local officials, the mayor of Buffalo, the county executive, the uh, county chairman of the Democrat Party. You're going to see that continue every day. It's going to be like death by a thousand cuts as he becomes a man without a party, basically, uh, as long as he sticks this out. And I think it's all going to come down to vote counting in the assembly, but more importantly, in the Senate to see if there's enough votes to convict him. And finally, Ken, let me ask you the significance of that statement that we alluded to at the top of the show from the assembly speaker, a Democrat, someone who has been politically aligned with this governor for many years, but who is saying we now have the evidence and we're moving forward with impeachment quickly. Well, I, I think that's a pretty damning statement. Uh, it's the, uh, the kickoff for the judiciary thing, but uh, it, it's likely that's going to move faster than that because there is no support at all among Democrats or Republicans for the governor at the moment. And uh, they they will be able to cut off uh, everything from him unless he makes his decision to get out. So I'm, I'm uh, in agreement with Carol. I think it's probably going to move pretty quickly. Certainly a historic day in New York and more conversation to come, but we appreciate the conversation. We have to leave it there for now. Thank you both for coming on. Thank you. Thank you.